guys are Patrick Buick is joining me in studio today. We're going to be speaking about a natural remedy called Buhu. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. Now, I think I'm not the only one, but when I was researching for this interview, Buhu was, was something that was new to me, something that I'd never heard about. So why don't we start off by laying a foundation and have you explain to us what exactly Buhu is and, sure. and how it was discovered? Well, Buhu has been around for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. um, Strange enough, it only grows in the Western Cape. Nowhere else in the world. In the only world. in the Western Cape. Only in the Western Cape. So it says it's a very, very specific yeah. um, part of the indigenous plant of, of Cape Town, of Western Cape. And it's been known since, in fact, the days of the hot and tot or the sand, the, the koi sand. Mm -hmm. What happened is when the um, settlers arrived in the Cape, they noticed that the koi sands were using this particular plant to treat ailments such as cystitis, bladder infections, uh, prostate problems, etc. And they started using it themselves without knowing what the medicinal properties were behind this particular plant. So Buhu is part of the Feinbos, mm -hmm. in other words, it's part of the natural um, plants of the Western Cape. And it belongs to the family of plants called Agathoma. There are different types, but there are two that we particularly research. The one is called Betulina, and the other one is called Crenulata. Mm. So it grows in a very, very thin strip between the Cedarburg Mountains and the Hottentots Holland. And it's very difficult to actually plant and cultivate yourself. Um, so it needs a very particular soil type, um, you know, cl climate conditions, rocky soils, etc. And it has the most incredible medicinal properties. Why does it only grow in the Western Cape? Good question. We don't know. People have actually tried to cultivate it in the hot houses, etc. Mm -hmm. It seems as if that it needs very um, hot and arid conditions in summer and very wet winters yeah. in the Western Cape. Yeah. But I think over and above that, um, you can't even transplant it, let's say, from the Cedarburg and get it to grow on Table Mountain. Wow. So it's very specific soil types, um, climatic conditions, and who knows, you know, something magical that makes it unique to South Africa or to uh, the Western Cape. Now talk us through the medicinal properties that sure. come along with the plant. Um, look, we've been researching it for, for quite a few years, mm -hmm. about 15 years we've been working on the Buhu plant. And the most potent property I can describe it is anti-inflammatory. So, and it also has anti-infective properties, in other words, it kills bacteria. And now we understand why the koi sands were using it to treat bladder infections, because by using it, you're cutting out the inflammation immediately, yeah. so you feel better, but at the same time, it's also getting rid of the bacteria causing the prostate issues or bladder issues. We've taken it further. We are busy identifying the active molecules now in the plant, but just more recently, colleagues and myself at um, Stellenbosch University have actually been looking at the properties of the plant to actually treat diabetes wow. with some amazing, okay, we're still in the animal model, in other mm -hmm. words, the rat model, but I'm sure that shortly we'll be able to go into a an human study to actually look at it. And what we're finding is that it can actually treat a pre-diabetic state very easily. And even so, if you are full-on diabetic, needing insulin, you may be able to reduce the amount of insulin that you have to take in to, to um, control your glycemia, the wow. blood sugar levels. So it has huge potential. So it's anti-inflammatory. So if we're talking about inflammation, most of the chronic um, conditions today, be it cardiovascular problems, diabetes, etc., are all linked with underlying inflammation. It has anti-infective properties. Um, also, very, very um, clear-cut, it has hypertensive properties. In other words, people with high blood pressure, it brings down the blood pressure and now most recently now with the anti-diabetic properties. So we don't think it's the same molecule, obviously, mm -hmm. doing having these different properties, but we're now looking at the different extracts of the plants to see what can we ascribe, what is it in the plant that can kill bacteria, what is in the plant that can treat hypertension, and so we're going on. It really does sound like a magical plant. It's, it's in the most amazing, amazing, amazing plant. Is this something that you think could replace um, a type of antibiotic one day? Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you know, one of the most pressing issues that we have in the world today is antibiotic resistance. Yeah. You know, as we're prescribing more and more antibiotics, so the organisms are becoming resistant to them. So now what we're now doing is, if we manage to identify, which we're very close to, mm -hmm. identify the active to now start testing against antibiotic resistance staphylococcus, or you know, we, we talk about the extended Klebsiella, that type of thing, and obviously a resistance TB. Mm -hmm. We don't have any proof for it as yet, but that is our ultimate aim, is to see whether we actually have a new molecule which can really target the resistant, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Now, are there other plants in the landscape that are similar to Buhu? 
Not really. Not, okay. not, not in the same comparison. There are other plants in the Western Cape, in fact, in South Africa and in the world, which have very potent you know, biological activities. But I think Buchu is so specific. Um, it's South African, it's Western Cape, and it has these most incredible, potent, potent properties. Mm -hmm.